Welcome to Excel 2010 Statistics video number 39. Hey, if you want to download this workbook, Business 210 Chapter 4.xlsm, click on the link below the video. Hey, we're going to start on the sheet uh, hypergeom.dist. Now, last video we saw how to use this function to calculate conditional probability. It's actually the hypergeometric distribution. It's discrete probability distribution. We actually don't talk about pro discrete probability distributions till next chapter, but we saw how awesome this function was, the hypergeomdist function. And let's go back and remind ourselves. I'm going to click on the sheet M. No, M answer. We asked the question, what's the probability of pulling three straight queens. So we could calculate this one by hand, 4 divided by 15, 52. That's the first card we pull, right? But there's no replacement, meaning the card is gone once we pull it. So then to pull the next queen, this is a, a conditional probability. The sample space has changed, right? 52 has become 51. So we calculate 3 divided by 51. And then finally, the third one, once 2 are already out, that, that conditional probability is 2 divided by 50. But to, to pull 3 straight, we simply multiply them. Now, the beauty of this example is of all the, of all the sample points, there's only one. There's only one possibility when you have a sample of size 3, and you're saying pull 3 straight queens. So this calculation is pretty straightforward. And we also saw how to use this function. This function right here is the 2007 and earlier function. Here's the 2010 function. And now we're going to talk about this function. And we're going to go over to the this sheet here, hypegom.dist. Now this example, let's look at this example here. What is the probability of pulling one woman's name from a hat in three tries when the hat has 10 women's names and 4 men's names. All right, so here's everything in the population, 10. Population uh, pulling a, a woman's, there's 6 women's names in the hat, 4 men. Now, if we ask the question, what's the probability of pulling 3 women's names all in a row. That would be three straight names. That one we can do pretty easily. We could do a formula like this equals, well, there's six to start. So I'm going to say six divided by 10. And then now the next one is, well, the sample space has changed. We already pulled one, so it's five divided by nine times, well, four divided by eight. All right, so we could calculate that. But now, let's think about this. Let's look down here, because this question, when we say, OK, we're going to have a sample size of 3, which means we're going to pull three names. We are going to try and pull just one uh, woman's name in three tries. All right, So this is a different setup. And we're going to define a success as pulling a uh, woman's name from the hat. If we were to list all the sample, points, right? Here's three women's name. We could calculate this probability, and we already did, right? Equals 6 divided by 10 times 5 divided by 9 times 4 divided by 8. I hope I got that right. That's hard to do to, like that, right? So that one. But now, we're, we're done. That's, that's the probability, right? Because there's only one in all of the possible sample points. There's www. But now, we've asked, what's the probability of 1? Well, we actually have to list all of the sample points and then calculate in each individual one using our multiplying rule and then use our adding rule. All right, so let's go ahead and try this. Um, one name. So there's, we pulled a W on the first one and then an M and an M for men's name. So I'm going to calculate this probability. OK, what is it? It's uh, 6 divided by 10 times, oh, and now we're done, right? So the next one would be, how, well, how many men's names? There's 4 divided by 9 times 3 divided by 8, right? Oh, OK, and then here's another one right here. So we actually, because there's more than one sample point in our sample space, we actually have to calculate it again. And actually, we're going to get the same answer here. Um, but let's go ahead and do it. Uh, let's see. We start off with, an on the first name pulled, we have a, a man's name, right? So we're going to 4 divided by 10 
times, and now there's six women's names left, so six divided by nine times, and then we're back to men's names, so that's three divided by eight. Now, because multiplying fractions, you just multiply everything in the numerator and everything in denominator, we can actually repeat this all the way down for uh, this try also. So there we have it, our three sample points where we get exactly one woman's name in three tries. Now that we have this, we can come over, and I'm going to ask the question. Um, I didn't put a probability here. I should have put a prob uh, uh, symbol here. This is the probability. Uh, here's the question. What is the probability that you'll get one woman's name in three polls? So I'm going to say um, P right and so now all we do is we these were our multiplying rules our conditional probability multiplying rules so now we're simply going to use our adding once we have all the sample points right and there we go so it's 0.3 now let's see how to do this with our new function so equals and we can pick here uh, this is the old compatibility one but we're going to see that this one does uh, some new things so I'm going to double click here well just as we saw in la last video, sample successes, that's one, comma, number in sample, well, we're pulling three times, population successes, six, number uh, in the population, ten, comma, and now we have this. This is a new fifth argument for cumulative or probability mass. Now, Probability mass just means that's what we're calculating. If in the older one, that's all, that's all the older function did. But now we can put a 0 here, and that will calculate our answer. Now that's a lot easier than have, having to list all of the uh, individual sample points in our sample space and then calculate the probabilities. Now over here on the answer sheet, you can come over here and see that I actually calculated them and actually calculate them all correctly with the correct numbers and everything copy and paste just to show you, um, that our rule is, right, when we list all of our sample points and calculate the probability for each sample point when we add them up, we better get one. Now this was different than the um, setup we saw earlier when we were doing classical probability, right? This one is a little bit more complicated. The actual calculation for an individual sample point so it's a little bit more complicated. But just what you want to see here conceptually is we did the multiplying rule for conditional probability three times, and then we added. And further, much easier if we're just using this new function. Now, for our class, um, I don't think we have any problems where we're going to do anything but zero, meaning calculating the probability uh, for just this instance. But there's a new option, and actually I'm going to click, let's, let's try it here. This one's going to be the probability that we get less than or equal to one's uh, woman's name in three tries. So what we would have to do without that func without the new function is we'd actually have to build this distribution and then add them, right? So here we have 1, 1, 1, and a 0. So if I add all these up, that would be the answer to less than or equal to 1's woman's name pulled in from our hat. So that means we could get a 0 or a 1. Well, now we can do this with this new function. Right, so we do our sample successes, comma, our sample number in the sample, our population successes, that's six, our population number, and then comma, we do one. Remember, our true is one, zero is false. So I'm going to put one. And there we get our uh, awesome new 2010 uh, conditional probability hypergeometric distribution function. All right, um, we'll see you next video.